Hello and welcome to a new graphic novel review by myself, Andrew Ace. So, as I said earlier in January, and here we are in February already, uh, I'm going to switch back to doing a best of for a little bit as my uh, weekly reading tries to keep incorporating new graphic novels to share with you. So, for my first best of series of 2015, I'm going to do my best graphic novel reads for Wolverine. So, uh, obviously these days, uh, the uh, old Knucklehead is uh, passed away, but uh, I think as we all suspect, um, he's going to be back. I mean, this is comic books, nobody dies forever. Now, I have a good library, 26 shells of graphic novels, but uh, that said, I don't have every graphic novel out there, and I don't have every Wolverine graphic novel out there. So, my best of series is determined by what I have on my shelf. Um, it's not to say that I haven't read issues for more, I haven't maybe read other graphic novels, um, but in this case is just uh, what I have and what I can share that I can guarantee are great reads because I've gone and spent my own money to buy them. So, first up, I'm going to do Weapon X. So this was originally um, printed as uh, Marvel Comics Presents back in the early 90s. Um, illustrated? Written and illustrated? Let me double check. Uh, written and illustrated by Barry Windsor Smith. So I'm just going to hold this still for a moment, maybe get the camera to focus on it. And this is an older printing of the graphic novel. You can find uh, a newer version that actually uh, shares a similar cover to our next book um, when they were reprinting some of the classic Wolverine reads. And that, th that is what this is. This is the revelation in the early 90s of Wolverine's mysterious past. So at that point, you know, everybody knew that he'd come from a clandestine group and that uh, he couldn't remember uh, all that he had done. But this uh, really shed light on, well, how he got the adamantium onto his bones, um, what he'd been doing in Canada but working for the CIA. Well, it doesn't answer every question, but certainly this set the tone to uh, elevate Wolverine from maybe just a simple hack and slash, well loved hack and slash character, but to a more deeply background story rich um, character that, uh, you know, these days uh, has had even uh, 20 odd years to, to build on this volume, Weapon X. So as I was just uh, showing you, uh, Wolverine Origin. Um, as opposed to, there was an ongoing series called Wolverine Origins that spun sort of out from this, and of course there's also been a more recently Wolverine Origin 2. And uh, this is by Paul Jenkins, Andy Kubert, let me double check that, uh, yeah, Andy Kubert, uh, who has a brother, Adam, uh, both sons of the legendary Joe Kubert. So, uh, this uh, revealed, went then sort of 10 years after this, went back to when Logan was a very young boy, his birth, his very origin story, if you will. I'm just going to hold it up, let's uh, the camera focus on it. So, um, collecting six issues, this was originally published, the all-important uh, copyright page, you want to check the information. Um, originally published 2001-2002, so almost, yeah, you know, a decade after this. If you're a Wolverine fan, this is where you need to start. This is the first volume in a way. I mean, it undoes decades of mystery and suspense, but uh, to be honest, if you're coming on board to a Wolverine read these days, um, you might as well start at the beginning and just go all the way through. Uh, and that would be the book to pick it up. Revealing Wolverine Logan's true origins as a young boy growing up in Canada. So, two classic, classic reads. Um, now I'm going to show you something a little different. If you've got a, a younger reader, um, especially say under 13, you may be concerned about some of the violence, the action in the Wolverine comic books, and I mean, you know, fair enough. But your kid has seen one of the movies, or maybe it's a you know, nephew or niece, whoever, but the, you know, maybe they're a fan of the character and want to read more, uh, this would be one of the graphic novels uh, and there's a series to, to go looking for. It's called Wolverine First Class. It came out, I'm just going to hold this up, it came out a little while after uh, there being an X-Men First Class that sort of went and told stories between the adventures we already knew and stories aimed at younger readers and often in the spirit and sometimes even in the style of art uh, that, you know, the comic books back in the 60s and 70s had. So, 
they did something like this for Wolverine, bringing in Kitty Pride, um, long-standing ally, you know, sort of sidekick partner um, of Wolverine, and uh, they uh, do a series where he's teaching, which uh, obviously, you know, with uh, Jean Grey school, uh, you know, goes on even further. But, but this is just him. Uh, stories when he's, you know, maybe a bit younger, looking after um, the X-Men characters or the younger mutants in the X-Men, but also stories that take place kind of between the adventures that we knew for Wolverine, while at the same time, um, and I think this is key and important for younger readers sometimes, it's free of continuity, big crossovers, um, the reading comprehension is designed for younger uh, younger readers, but also so is uh, the violence, the action. I mean, it's still it's still a great read, though. Uh, a fun, fun read. The series goes on for at least four or five volumes. Um, each one, this one collects the first four issues, uh, likewise. And the creators involved are Fred Van Lent um, and illustrated by Andrea DeVito. Um, and they actually also then collects at the back... Um, you know, Wolverine's first appearance. So if you ever wanted to read, uh, you know, issue Incredible Hulk 181, uh, this, this graphic novel has it. So it's Wolverine First Class. And just to show the cover for the second volume, which of course features even more Canadian content, uh, go Canada. So, my, uh, my last uh, recommendation, favorite read, big surprise here, another book by Mark Miller, one of my favorite writers. Um, and uh, this is Wolverine Old Man Logan, uh, or just simply Old Man Logan. Um, <clears throat> illustrated by Steve McNiven. Uh, Mark Miller, like I mentioned before, is the writer. And this takes place uh, sort of, you know, 50, 70 years in an undisclosed amount of time in the future after what has been a, a major superhero cataclysm where most of the heroes have died, a few villains still remain, and they now control a kind of a Mad Max post-apocalyptic America. A blind Hawkeye shows up and tells Wolverine, you know, you're needed for one last mission, one last trip across America, uh, and they set out kind of in a, a buddy, you know, road trip style adventure uh, that has, you know, the reader uh, introduced to some of the crazy changes that have occurred um, but also the fate, or fates, of a number of their favorite characters. Um, and, and being a Mark Miller book, this book does not spare on the violence, does not spare on the action. Definitely mature rated. So, um, you know, if you're over 18, sure, great. If you're under, I don't know, maybe around 16, it's going to be an okay read, depending upon knowing the reader themselves. But uh, really, you know, uh, for, for adult fans, maybe coming back into the character, this is a fantastic book, um, definitely geared to be darker, um, ultra-violent, but also told in Mark Miller's signature kind of uh, cinematic, fast-paced style. And just uh, the, the artwork is, is stunning. I don't know how much of this you're going to see, but uh, the, the, there's at least one issue where I remember reading it when it was coming out, uh, and by the time I was done, I just sort of sat there in silence for, for a good minute or two, just shocked by what I had read. I mean, brilliantly done, um, but I mean, this book pulls no punches. Uh, and, and if that's your thing, uh, you know, it's going to seriously deliver on, on the action, on the intensity. So let's try to look for a map uh, where they show um, the sort of new America that, that, that has been created in this post-apocalyptic world. But... Like I was saying, uh, it's a standalone read and, and fantastic on that level as well. It doesn't require having read Wolverine before, you know, being hooked into a new series. But uh, of all of these, probably stands as my favorite read as well. Just for uh, beauty of art, storytelling style, uh, and absolute epicness. Well, guys, those are my favorite Wolverine graphic novel reads. Um, so uh, if you have any questions, comments, want to see any books reviewed, um, please let me know. And I just thought I'd mention, maybe should have done it at the beginning, you can find me on Twitter at at UYS999. It's my last name, it's spelled UYS, it's pronounced Ace, it's a thing. Uh, you can also find me on Instagram uh, with the same handle, likewise, pretty much most social medium, uh, media, you know, I'm on Pinterest, on Facebook, 
that's all, you know, a little more maybe just me. Um, and uh, yeah, so so look me up, Twitter, Instagram. I'm all flushed and embarrassed. And uh, guys, I'll uh, I'll see you next week.